No, all right, problem eight, we have a statistician that proposed a new method for constructing a 90% confidence interval to estimate the median of assessed home values for homes in a large community. To test the method, the statistician will conduct a simulation by selecting 10,000 random samples of the same size from the population. For each sample, a confidence interval will be constructed using the new method. If the confidence level associated with the method is, with the new method is actually 90%, keyword, which of the following will be captured by approximately 9,000 of the confidence intervals constructed from the simulation. Okay, so let's, let's recognize and remember that the confidence level tells you the capture rate, the capture rate. So we have a 9% capture rate of the true population parameter. What we're trying to estimate is the median. So the median of the, you know, the population of home values so we'll capture about, you know, 9,000, or we'll capture um, nine or 9,000 of the intervals will then capture the true population median. So then the answer will be E, the population median, because that's what we're trying to estimate. Problem nine. The distribution of monthly rent for one bedroom apartments in a city is approximately normal with mean $936 and standard deviation $61. So let me draw a normal curve just right away. Normal with mean 936, standard deviation 61. A graduate student is looking for a one bedroom apartment and wants to pay no more than $800 in monthly rent. Of the following, which is the best estimate of the percent of one bedroom apartments in a city with a monthly rent of at most $800. Okay, so we basically want to look for the proportion or the, you know, the, the area underneath this normal curve from 800 and below. So 800 is going to be to the left. So 800 to below. We want to find essentially this area. So think of it as going from negative infinity to 800. So for this, you can, you know, you can you calculate a z-score, use your table and do all that. But the quicker way, just use technology, go to the distribution function in your calculator, go to VARS or distribution technically, go to distribution, normal CDF. The syntax will be the lower bound, in this case, a negative infinity. So you enter a very large negative number comma, upper bound, we're going up to 800, comma, followed by the mean, which is 936, comma, followed by the standard deviation. So this will give us our area or proportion. And it's not going to be, this is a very poorly, this is not drawn to scale, but it's only about 1.289%. or the closest answer will be 1.3%, so A. If you have like a newer version or like um, an 84, 84, TI-84, then um, it's actually a lot easier to work with these um, functions. All right, um, problem 10, a news article reported that college students who have part-time jobs work an average of 15 hours per week. The staff of a college newspaper thought that the average might be different from 15 hours per week for their college. Data were collected on the number of hours worked per week for a random sample of students at the college who have part-time jobs. The data were used to test the hypotheses. The true, so the true mean mu is 15 versus the alternative is that it's not 15. Or mu is the true mean number of hours worked per week for all students at the college with part-time jobs. The results of the test are shown in the table below. Okay, so here's our data. Assuming, or here's our statistics, I guess. Assuming all conditions for inference were met, which the following represents a 95%, about 95% comments interval from you. Okay, so remember, this will be our point estimate. When you make a comments interval, we start with the point estimate, plus or minus our critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. This case, in this case, our point estimate 
is the sample mean 13.755.25. The critical value is our T star, our T star. And we get our T star by looking at the degrees of freedom we need and the, the confidence level we want to use. So we want to find a 95% um, confidence level. So we go look, let's look at our table. So it's much easier for me to explain. In your formula packet, you go to table B. So this one, T, our T star, go to the row with degrees of freedom 25 and confidence level 95%. So 25 aligned with 25, 25, 95. So our critical value is 2.060. And the standard deviation of the statistic will be our standard error, which is already calculated here, 0 0.707. And so then let's just multiply that out to see what that is. And that'll be point, or that'll be 1.4562, 1.45642. And so then our answer you can see is going to be E given in this form.